So I've been asked to do a video on animals I feel are important to everybody's collection, especially for beginners. Um, I've only picked two here just because I don't feel like going through a whole ton. You know, for a beginner, the ultimate beginning snake, especially in ball pythons, are pastels. You know, people are saying pastels are getting old, but the fact is pastels are in everything. They're the beginning brightening morph. They are in every morph to this date. And pastels are just plain cool. But starting here, I'm starting with an orange ghost or an orange hypo. Um, the original name is orange hypo. You, people want to use orange ghost, but the fact remains that the snake keeper, uh, Dan and Coletta, produced a hypo exanthic, and that's called the true ghost. And that's where the ghost name should be. It's not supposed to be with these hypos. Um, but like I said, this is an orange hypo here. She's originally from Mark Mandic. Not the friendliest snake in the world, but a lovely animal nonetheless. Um, it, people ask me why I would say hypo, and the reasons I think are, hypo looks good on everything. You've got, you know, a pastel orange ghost, phenomenal animal. You know, the pogs are wonderful, they're bright. Uh, a friend of mine, Terry, has one that uh, I wouldn't even call a pog. It's just, it's so bright. And, and that's the really the nice thing about it. It's just it's a brightening morph. It's a recessive morph that brightens everything. You know, and on their own, they just look cool. Really, really dull patterns that are really bright. Some nice blushing. Their heads look phenomenal. I don't think she's going to stick her head back out here for us. Because uh, like my Mojave female, this girl just, she doesn't like anybody. Um, why? I don't know. Lately she's been more shy than anything, but hey, that's fine. It means I'm not getting bit. But nonetheless, like I said, uh, hypos are a great snake. They don't cost a lot anymore. You know, you can pick up a pastel orange hypo for four, five hundred bucks, three hundred if you really look. You can pick up an orange ghost on its own for less than that if you look. It's just that's what it's coming down to. It's pretty pathetic that a recessive gene is dropping in price when these things go into everything. Everybody likes the hypo. You know, I, I've know people that say it's not going anywhere because it's falling in value. Well, okay, you're right. It is. It is falling in value. There's nothing we can do about that. But fact still remains when these things are put into other animals like the champagne gene, uh, the super cinnamon hypo, these animals just they transform that snake in the color to something just absolutely phenomenal. Nonetheless, that's just, that's the champagne, or the hypogene here. The second animal I have pulled out, oh, there's her shyness going. The second animal I've chose here is this little gem. Um, I know it's a white snake and people always say, oh, it's a white snake, it's boring, whatever. And you know what? White snakes are getting old. A lot of people have them. But facts remain that this animal, it's a super. You know, if I bred that to a normal, I'll never get a normal. And that's a, a, just a great thing. Now this guy here, I'm sure most of you can tell by the head, the gray head. It being a super Mojave. Now I produced two of these this year. Uh, the female I sold off to 80 at 5 foot 16 exotics. You know, great guy to deal with. Love him. Funny as anything. Just, I love talking to him. But nonetheless, the female I produced went to him. This is her brother. They both eat wonderfully. And the reason I say the Mojave gene is so important is it's completely underrated. You know, you breed this to a normal. You get Mojave. It's nothing that exciting. But you breed this to another Mojave. You get this guy. You get, you get a beautiful cystic. Same goes with if you breed it to a butter a lesser, a het russo, you get these beautiful white snakes. Um, the, the other thing is, have you ever noticed that when something new comes out or something new comes out of Africa and something just random happens, a lot of the time it comes from when you breed it to a Mojave. Why it works like that, I don't know. You know, look at the special Mojave. When it's bred together, you get a beautiful crystal. There's nothing cooler than that. You know, you breed this to a Mojave to uh, that whatever that gene is, uh, Regis and Co. had. They bred it this year, and man, I don't even know what exactly they produced, but the outcome was absolutely stunning. Such a beautiful animal. 
you, you can pick up a Mojave cheap nowadays. They're not the most expensive thing, and it's sad to see, once again, for what they produce and how well they do. Slow down, buddy. This guy just wants to go. He's always like this, friendly as anything, but always just wants to go. You know, but anyways, just like I said, you can pick up Mojave's cheap nowadays. They're not the most expensive snake in the world. They are more for a breeder. These, unless you have a lot of money and feel like having a really nice display snake, I don't suggest picking up a Mojave. But if you want to try breeding, Mojave's do wonderful things. You know, I, I saw Mojave's this year going for two, three hundred bucks for for a male. A female you can pick up for three, four hundred bucks. If you look, you might be able to get it less. You know, it, it's disappointing to see, but to me, I, I love Mojave's. You know, if you watched the video just before this one, you know I have a female here that I would have shown, but I tried opening her bin and reluctantly. I got a little too close and she just tried to just bite me on the nose. So it was easier just to show this little boy here because this is actually her son. Um, you know, one thing I will bring up that's just a little off topic is the white snakes. You know, people love them, people hate them because they're getting old. You know, it's not the new thing anymore. You know, the new thing is champagnes and deserts, bananas and corals. But fact still remains, white snakes are cool. They're different. And to me, you know, I could go ahead and make a pure white snake this year, but I don't think I'm going to. Just because I like that tiny bit of pattern. That Look at that head, you know. That gray head is so wonderful on these guys. And that pearl white stripe they got going down by their eyes, along with the blue eyes. So just, they're beautiful snakes. And this guy's not letting go of my finger here. If I could just get him to... But nonetheless, I think I'm going to have to end the video here. This guy's getting a little restless for me. And I uh, don't want anything to happen to him. But nonetheless, you know, hopefully this guy will have some awesome breeding projects in the future. He's only two, ooh, 150 grams right now. He's still small. He uh, started off slow eating. But, you know, for now, if you guys have any questions or comments, you know, post them. Tell me if you think I'm wrong. I'm more than happy to read what you have to say. Nonetheless, uh, take it from there.